Okay, 30 second review to start because they sell so fast. Use the link in the description to get one, use code RJN to get the discount. The Ultralight 2 is the smallest top gaming mouse I've used. It's basically a 50 gram version of the Ultralight. The size can be adjusted with the Infinity skins of different thickness. Top sensor, amazing cable, great buttons, great shape, just an amazing mouse. And yes, as expected and predicted, it's my new main for now. Okay, go get one if that's all you need to hear. Otherwise, let's get into the actual review. And I'll slow down my speech. Sorry to start that way, but Final Mouse sell all their stock in under a day. I think it was under 4 hours last time for most of it. Now, as I've said in other Final Mouse videos, I really wanted a smaller ultralight, especially once they got these flexible cables. And they seem to have made the cable a little tighter now. See, it's a little smaller. The braid feels closer to the wires inside. Still feels pretty much wireless while playing. So that's all good, and it's about 2 meters long or 6.5 feet. What I didn't expect was just how small they were going to make it. Let's start off with the size comparison. Here it is next to the Zowie S2 and Dream Machine's DM3 Mini. It's actually smaller than both. This might be the smallest actual gaming mouse I've ever tested. I'd say it's a much better shape than the DM3 Mini though. More height at the button area, comfort curves in the buttons, hump in the middle, and so on. I have the Final Mouse F58 on the left, and the Razer Death Adder on the right, because they're large. That should help you understand just how small these other mice are. So the first time I put my hand on it, I thought it might be too small for me. It was hard to find a grip that felt good. It took a whole night to adjust, and I'm used to changing mice all the time. With a grip width of about 5.3cm, it's actually small. As in, while most small mice are small medium, this one is actually small. It's about the size of my three fingers, so by the three finger rule, this is probably the smallest I should use. Any smaller and my hand is going to cramp. Even with this, I do get some discomfort. Eventually, my hand will adjust, but I don't think going smaller is too wise. The length is about 11.6cm, so I could probably go a bit shorter than this, because this measurement on my middle finger to the back of the knuckle is about 10.8cm. So, mouse choice. How do you choose the right size? This is just an idea I'm still testing, but I'm trying to find an easy way to recommend mice to people. Hold the mouse where your fingers would grip it, then put the three fingers on it like this. Line up that first join. That should match up. If you want the exact measurement, obviously measure across the join, and then check the measurement of the mouse at that section. You see on the death adder, it's clearly too big for me by this test. And on the F58, or original ultralight, I have a fair bit of space. This idea may not be accurate, it's all just guessing. I find what works for me, then logically you would assume someone with a bigger hand would need a larger mouse. Simple. These are just measurements I've noticed work well for when I'm choosing a mouse. If they suit you too, then great. But as always, you have to find what's right for you. Everyone is different. This is only meant to be a starting point. The same is true for length. Middle finger straight all the way to the knuckle. The mouse should be about the same length. That's for fingertip and claw grippers. And that's if you want to focus on improving your aim, not comfort. If you want comfort, obviously get something larger. Palm grip would need something larger too. Okay, with that said, I have my fingers positioned here, so a bit back from the button flare. So maybe having a bit longer is fine. As for the height, it's about 3.5 centimeters at the peak. Palm grip mice are generally 4 centimeters, so this is in line with other fingertip grip shells. And where my fingers end on the buttons, it's about 2 centimeters high, which as I was pointing out in the Abyssus Diva review, I think is right for me. Now, usually I'd recommend this to people who fit the dimensions above but this mouse can change its dimensions, with the included infinity skins. You get them in this box, three packs, ranging from 1 to 2.5mm, so they're pretty thin. But you can make this mouse 5mm thicker, not quite as thick as the F58, but close to it. And you can mix and match, so you choose where you want it to be wider. That also means you can start with a small mouse, and then build up. See which feels most comfortable, and what you aim best with. You can just peel them off too, there's no residue. Final Mouse made these especially for this. They come off quite easily. Just do it gently and carefully. Make sure you have the back ready too, so you can just put them straight back on. The adhesive I think will wear out eventually, like all do. So while you can try out a few combinations, it's probably best to avoid constantly changing them. But I did ask Final Mouse and they said you will be able to order replacements. It will take some practice to get right, and the pattern is meant to match the mouse. But with the left side, you have to line it up next to the side buttons. I found it easiest matching it with the side buttons first. Also, a potential problem using a thick side here is that the side buttons become harder to use. They can still be used with the thumb tip, but not in my usual way just using the join and tip. It's not a perfect solution to adding extra width, but it's a good option to have. As for the back, I find the point of contact with your hand is on the right. To avoid these bubbles and joins you might feel, put it on the right first, then slowly push it down and around the mouse. It won't look great from the base like this one, but think about the important parts of the mouse. I say they're where your hand touches it, 
So for me, it's on the right and on the top a bit. So this suits me better. As for how they feel, okay, so the skins definitely feel nicer because they don't have holes and they have a really nice texture to them. Nice and soft, I like them. This is the foam I think they were talking about. Can I feel the joints? Yeah, the top ones are a bit obvious. They're not bad, but not something I'd want on a mouse this good. So getting skins on there for the larger palm grip, not so great. This is more for claw and fingertip. And it's clear they've put a lot of effort into these. They're tapered, feel great, and are lightweight. Let's look at the weight now. Without infinity skins, it's a 50 gram mouse with a bit of cable. So I think their weight will be about 47 grams or so. They do it without the cable. Even with all the bigger skins though, it still only weighs 56 grams. So either way, you're going to have a very light mouse. Putting extra on top, we can see each one weighs about one or two grams. Also, I just said that the holes don't feel great. They're okay and I'll use them to get the weight reduction, but I think I would rather some extra weight and nicer sides again. That brings us to this material. From what they tell me, it's a new raw composite. The adhesive shouldn't damage it at all. To me, it feels like a hard plastic. Pretty nice though. It's unique and smooth. It's not white, it has a bit of a warm cream tone to it, which is why I think they chose this orange brown cable and wheel. It looks great with the sunset theme, but not much else. I was more of a fan of their previous color schemes. For those unfamiliar with the final mouse design, here's a quick tour of the shape. It looks fairly standard, but that's a good thing in my opinion, because when companies try to add unnecessary gaming flair, they end up creating shapes that are awkward to hold. This has some subtle curvature in the sides, horizontally and vertically, so you get comfort and extra assistance with the grip as you lift it. It makes a bit of a ledge. The top is slightly rounded to fit the curvature of your palm and fingers, and there are slight comfort curves in the buttons. Looking at the base, you can see the overall flatness of the design, other than the subtle curves. This is one of the best shapes out there in my opinion because they've kept it simple, but still managed to be comfortable, which is also what I'd call a safe shape because it doesn't force your fingers into exact positions. Like the other ultralights, it's still at 500Hz. Some say they prefer it, others say it's 2019, and 1000Hz should be standard. I'm still of the mind it doesn't really make a noticeable difference. One argument people give is that 500Hz has higher latency. So let's look at the latency. Here it is compared to the G903. In the human latency test, I found I was more consistent on the ultralight 2. But in the bomb test, the G903 performed a little better on average. I also tested against the Zowie S2, and from what I can see in the testing, there's not really an extra delay. You can argue that this isn't 100% accurate, and you'd be right. But I feel comfortable using it in-game, and I don't feel like it's messing with my timing at all. It's up to you if you want to care about this. Another potential problem I've heard people bring up is the wheels breaking on previous mice. Final Mouse have said the entire thing has been reconstructed. The wheel definitely feels different now. The side buttons have a more consistent click too. The main buttons have been updated to feel faster, but the ones on the F58 were already pretty great. So this is a slight improvement if anything. But speaking of the buttons, let's do the sound check. Nice clicks, really liking the feel of left and right. Mouse 3 is also quite good. It's not too hard to press in like some others, but still obviously needs more force to click. Using the wheel up and down is the most interesting. It has noticeable steps and is still fairly quiet. However, it has this extra tension, like I'm winding something up. We'll see how this goes in the long term. So far, it feels good to use. There is some variation in the button sounds, but that's pretty normal. Unless you get one that's actually really bad, it's not worth worrying about. So if it's hindering you in game and you can really tell the difference, then yeah, maybe consider a return or get a refund. But otherwise, this is on pretty much every mouse. Tapping these and shaking them, there's no extra sound. They seem really well made, especially considering how light they are. As always, I'm sure they can be broken if you squeeze them really tightly, so don't do that. I've only had the mouse for about a week. I can't test for long-term use in that time. We won't know if there are any problems until much later. As always, if you can't get a return or a refund, and you're afraid of something going wrong, don't buy it. It's a bit of a luck game when it comes to products. All companies get defective units, and some just break. Not much we can really do. Anyway, the feet are new too. They're meant to give some extra control, but it's such a light mouse, I don't think they will do much. They do glide well though. That's the main thing. There were some complaints about shipping times. They were clearly too optimistic about how fast they could ship 45,000 mice. And apparently there are more mice this time. 
So if you're going to place an order, please be aware of how long it may take to get your copy. I don't know how long, that's not my job. Just want you to know there could be a huge wait. There's no software on these mice, just the usual DPI steps of 400, 800, 1600 and 3200. And for sensor performance, they're still using the 3360 in this one as far as I'm aware. I've tested the sensor so many times it's not worth going over again. The review is already running long, but yes, it's still a top optical. I didn't find any issues. If you want to see my testing, I'll leave a link to the video in the description. I'll just say here the liftoff distance is under a DVD. Now for the conclusion. I've been waiting 4 years for this to be made. A small lightweight mouse with a top optical sensor, great shape, super flexible cable, low latency buttons, smooth feet and everything else I've mentioned. I'm not going to call it the end game because there are always ways to improve and change. My motto in life is always forward, but for now I'm satisfied. All the other mice feel too big and heavy to me now, even the S2. It really is that small. And you know how you get a product that's so good it actually makes you want to play more? This is it for me. And the more I play, the more I love it, and the less I want to use other mice. I really hope they continue to make this one, so everyone in suits can get one. There are always sellout claims when it comes to praising Final Mouse products, but there's not much I can critique on it. Pretty much in every video, this is what I've been asking for. It won't suit everyone, but it definitely suits me. I love this thing. I will caution you again that it will take some getting used to. It's tiny. It took me a while to adjust and my hand is only 18 by 9 centimeters, or thereabouts. My aim has definitely improved. I feel free with this. Even when my head isn't quite in the game, I find myself hitting these crazy accurate shots. And that is because it's a very small mouse with a lightweight design, and it fits my grip style. I've been playing Quake for almost 21 years at this point. I've tried so many things to improve at the game in that time. I assume you're here for my experience. And there are certain things you just know by playing games a lot. And with all that experience, I can see I'm hitting shots I just wouldn't hit usually, even with the Zowie S2. This mouse isn't for everyone, but for those who will suit, if they put in the time, I think they'll play on a different level to what they would have with other mice. This one is special. I'm sure the people with large hands felt something similar with the F58. So glad we finally got a small version. Apparently the price is higher on this, but honestly, as it's the best mouse for me right now, I would gladly pay for it. I used to spend $100 on death adders and they were okay compared to this. This isn't a sponsored video. By law, I would have to tell you if it was, but it isn't. Final Mouse have never given me money to say anything or told me what to say. These reviews are always my own thoughts. I just really love this mouse. That's why I asked for it for so long. If you enjoy my reviews, you can use my discount code or link to buy the mouse, and that will help support what I do, because that's who actually pay me. Everyone who buys with my links and watches my videos. So big thanks for watching, of course. It's really simple. I'm here to serve you guys with the best reviews I can make. I put in a lot of work, so I hope they help. Speaking of help, all I did was ask Final Mouse to make a smaller version. They did the rest. They deserve all the credit. I was not part of the design process at all, and they did an amazing job. Any warranty issues, remember to contact support, not me. But thanks again Final Mouse for my new main. They didn't have to do this, but they did. Check the description for more information, including other ways you can help support what I do. And if you made it this whole way through, again, big thanks for watching. This video is huge. For my standards anyway. And as always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.